This week at Starbase, while construction continues on Ship 36 and Ship 37, work continues on the tank farm expansion and flame trench for Pad B, and we witness the first static fire of a previously flown booster. Now let's dig into this week's update. Several thunderstorms rolled through Starbase overnight on Friday, prompting tornado warnings across South Texas and South Padre Island. In the morning, workers performed damage assessment, the launch site seemed to weather the storm well, and crews got right back to work. The new section of the tank farm was tested in the evening, with venting seen near the four newly installed pumps. The ninth and final liquid oxygen pump skid was lifted into place, completing the structural framework of the cryo pump station. On Saturday, the first two pieces of Pad B's flame diverter support structure arrived at the launch complex. These heavy-duty pieces of steel will sit directly below the launch mount and were built to transfer the force of Super Heavy's exhaust from the water-cooled diverter plates into the launch pad's foundation. The tank farm was tested again in the evening, repeating the test scene on Friday. And on Sunday, the third flame deflector support base was delivered to the launch site. The fourth flame deflector support was delivered on Monday, ready and waiting for installation inside the flame trench. Two prefabricated manifolds for the subcooler units were also brought to the launch site. A pair of previously delivered manifolds were also put in place, linking some of the subcooler output systems together. Another manifold, a ventilation line for one of the subcoolers, was then installed on top of the unit. Starting shortly before midnight into Tuesday morning, Booster 14, which first flew on Starship's seventh test flight, was lifted and placed on a booster transport stand as workers prepared to roll the Super Heavy to the launch site for a static fire test. The grid fins were offset one at a time, making more room to clear the walls of the bay. The booster was then rolled out into the yard and the grid fins were reset to their neutral positions. Booster 14 then departed the build site and began heading down Highway 4 to the launch complex. If all goes well, Super Heavy Booster 14 will become the first vehicle since Starhopper to launch for a second time. Upon arrival, the booster was brought into the complex and taken down to Pad A and placed next to the orbital launch and integration tower. With the chopsticks ready and waiting for a lift, the booster was moved between them, the arms were raised up to the booster lifting pins, and the ship quick disconnect arm was swung out. While the booster was waiting, crews placed the sump for the fifth pump at the cryogenic pump station. Once the chopstick stabilizer pins were fixed in place, booster 14 was lifted off the transport stand and up the launch mount before being slowly lowered inside. After a few adjustments to make sure everything was lined up, the booster was set down inside the launch mount ring. With the booster mounted in place now, workers began taking down the scaffolding from the top of the launch mount. At the build site, a Merlin engine, previously on display inside the Stargate building, was brought out and taken to Sanchez. And back on the launch mount, the booster quick disconnect system was engaged. At Stargate, a Raptor that was also on display alongside the Merlin was also taken to Sanchez. A pair of igniter tests were performed on Booster 14's 33 Raptor engines to make sure they can be lit. The launch mount work platform was rolled out of the launch complex through the D2 gate and taken to the Starhopper lot, keeping it a safe distance from the launch pad. The SpaceX crane's boom foot left the launch complex and headed up Highway 4. Once enough vehicles were cleared out of the Starhopper lot, the booster transport stand was brought to the lot for safekeeping. Mega Bay 2's doors were open on Thursday morning, revealing progress on Ship 36. A short time later, Starship 37's aft section was then brought out of Star Factory and taken into the bay. An early morning detonation suppression system test verified that the launch site was ready to support a static fire test. With a full load of liquid oxygen and partial load of methane, Booster 14 fired its Raptor engines for the first time since Flight 7, with 29 of the 33 engines having been previously flown. The static fire lasted for the full duration of 8 seconds, giving the flight directors the data they need to decide if Booster 14 is ready to launch again on Flight 9. Three hours after the static fire test, the chopsticks were lowered from their launch position and placed around Booster 14. The booster transport stand and work platform were also brought back inside the launch site from the Starhopper lot. 
Two more sump pumps were then delivered to the launch site for the ongoing build out on the tank farm. The big story this week at Cape Canaveral was the launch of the Fram 2, the first ever crewed polar orbiting spaceflight mission. Checkouts were made on the crew's access arm at LC-39A ahead of the arrival of Falcon 9 Booster 1085 and Crew Dragon Resilience at the pad. The Falcon 9 and Dragon were then raised vertical and the crew access arm was extended. A short fall of Gravitas was sent out to sea in support of the mission as the Framonauts performed a launch rehearsal. After the rehearsal was finished, the booster performed a static fire test and everything was go for launch. The Fram 2 mission lifted off on Monday carrying Chun Wang, Janaki Mickelson, Rabia Rug, and Eric Phillips into polar orbit on a southward trajectory along the Florida coast. The crew would spend four days in orbit performing experiments and other research. Sheet piling work was underway at LC-39A as teams continue working to construct a flame trench like the one at Pad B over at Starbase. A Starlink launch also took place this week, supported at sea by Bob, and just read the instructions. The Starlink Group 6-80 mission lifted off a few hours before Fram 2, carrying 28 Starlink satellites into orbit. Bob, a short fall of Gravitas, and just read the instructions, successfully returned to Port Canaveral. While Bob brought the fairing halves back from the Starlink missions, the two landing barges brought Falcon 9 Booster 1085 and 1080 back from the Fram 2 and Starlink missions. Booster 1085 was the first in line for stowage at the dockside stand, followed by Booster 1080 a few hours later. Once its stay at the docks was finished, Booster 1085 was laid horizontally for the return trip to Roberts Road. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.